And in case there are any conspiracy theorists out there, how would you prove to us that you're in zero gravity? Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Allie? <laughs> Allie? Hey, there's my beautiful bride. How are you? I'm amazing. I mean, this is even better than I dreamed. Yeah, I look out the window and it's all so unbelievable. <laughs> People thought we really went to the space station. And there was a moment where I feel like, I feel like in the writer's room they discussed, they're like, we could just send Simon, he's small, just shoot him up there. Um, so don't give anyone any ideas. Hey look, this pen is floating. <laughs> How crazy is that? <laughs> We had to do all of our own slow-mo kind of non-gravity acting, which was a challenge because it's sort of like acting underwater. And then there were special effects. We were on like a pulley and a bicycle seat, and it was unlike anything I've, I've really done. We did it! We're on the ground! We survived! That was just a parachute. We still have another six miles to go. One of the astronauts in the scenes is actually an astronaut, Mike Massimino. He kept saying what a flashback it was for him and how the room was the same and even crew members on the set that it reminded him of, of crew members there. The set that we've had, a lot of experts got involved with helping them build that so it really looked exactly like the real thing. I got a little bit involved with helping them set this up and it, quickly they got over with my understanding of it because they wanted real detail of the of the spaceship dimensions and uh, exactly where everything looks and they looked at lots of pictures and video and they talked to lots of people. What's wrong? Nothing. Everything's fine. Howard. The other astronauts are being mean to me. <laughs> we give them a bit of a hard time on the show, you know, as this, the way the script's written. And we would certainly give him a hard time if he was really an astronaut, but it would be all in good fun. But I think Howard would make a pretty good astronaut, actually. He's a fun guy. His character is kind of funny. Uh, he seems like a good guy. Basically, you want someone that you don't mind hanging around with for, for a, really a few years, because you're not always in space with them. You're training with them for a few years. You want to be able to do the job, but you want someone that's going to be fun to be with in a confined area for a while. <laughs> I haven't heard screaming like I've heard from Howard, so I guess that's probably the biggest difference. He seems to be a little more emotional than what you would expect. Let's let that last scream go a little longer, if you can. You want us moving around a yeah, little bit? Let's, let's, yeah, right, let's just, that. you know. Yeah. Now I can say I'm not really an astronaut anymore, but I play one on TV. I can say that, but I'm still really an astronaut, so I'm not really sure how to phrase it. Two and a half hours walking around on the magnificent desolation of the surface of the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. My advice to anyone going into space is it may turn out to be a once-in-a-lifetime experience.
And since it is such a rare thing, enjoy every moment of it and be curious about everything you see. Think very carefully about everything that you do so that you can remember, come back, and then tell your friends all about the fun it was in space. To infinity and beyond. You know, when I grew up, we didn't use the word cool, but today what is cool is to think about space. And one of the things that we've learned to think about is the beginnings of time, the beginnings of the universe that came about with the Big Bang Theory. To me, a frontier is a place where your normal intuition no longer applies. The answers are not in the back of the book, and you're going to have to figure things out for yourself. And this makes an environment that's rich in discovery. It makes an environment where the things you learn are going to tickle your imagination and enrich your mind, and then you share them with everybody on Earth. And, and that is the value of going into these frontiers. And one of, another feature of a frontier is that once you start answering questions, you will find that the very questions you asked to begin with were not the right questions that needed to be asked in the first place. <laughs> and this character is what's going to keep human beings from becoming a fossil layer eroding out from some hillside on planet Earth and we won't become dinosaurs. After all, if the dinosaurs explored the, the space, if they colonized other planets, they would still be alive today. 